Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 50 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, uh, where today I want to start playing a little bit with Flux Networks. So I think we got most of this stuff covered, we can clear out that to do, and we can look into Flux Networks for today. Uh, Flux Networks is a really nice RF transfer mod that basically lets you transfer almost an unlimited amount of RF over an unlimited distance, basically for free. Is it a little overpowered? I would say yes. Does that also make it a little bit fun to play with? I would also say yes. Uh, Dire Legs overpowered. Some people are very concerned about balance. My opinion has always been, Minecraft is a sandbox game. You define your own balance. If you feel like a mod is overpowered, just don't play with it. Me? I like to have fun with overpowered things sometimes. Uh, so, you know, I try to I, tr I try to strike some semblance of balance with things. So, like, you'll notice, like, I tried to stick with some semblance of balance um, with with Laser I.O., for example. I, I tried to not go too crazy with things, and hopefully I succeeded in that. I don't know. We'll see. But at the same time, Flux Networks, we're going to check it out today, uh, mostly because it's a fun thing to play with. Uh, so you can see right now I've got a nice little bit of energy in my ultimate energy cube. I've been storing it up nice and good. Uh, the plan for today is to uh, get ready to make flux plugs and flux points. These are the two components. Uh, flux plugs will receive energy from adjacent blocks and add it to your flux network. And then flux points will provide energy to a blaze in adjacent blocks. Um, so flux plugs will take energy out of, for example, uh, something like a magmatic dynamo or extract the energy out of, for example, an ultimate energy cube. And then uh, a flux point would be used to put energy into things. So you can power your machines and whatnot with flux points. Um, there's also a flux controller that we're going to want to make that's going to be, uh, you don't need it, which is kind of weird, but it does let you wirelessly charge your items in your inventory, which super useful and cool. Looking forward to trying that out and making sure it works on things in your, uh, in your, in your, in your slots over here. So there's also some storage. It can get up to 128 million, but generally speaking, these are really expensive. Um, so I don't generally do too much with it. Uh, so let's start with how do we get into Flux Network. So there's a couple core components we're going to need here. Um, and to do that, we're going to start up here with uh, crafting, right? So what we want to do, we're going to want just a handful of more patterns. And uh, we're going to want to probably look into more mining options in the near future. I think I'm, I'm leaning towards making the RF Tools Builder, mostly because that's fortune. And that would probably be extremely OP. And again, like I just said minutes ago, that makes it fun. Uh, yeah, fortune with the fact that like iron and copper and ores and stuff drop multiple from fortune now would probably be pretty amazing. Um, so excited to try the RF Tools Builder. I think we're going to give that one a shot in, in, the, in the coming episodes. But first things we need to do is make sure we can transfer our RF power across dimensions, hence flux networks. So it's almost like I have a plan. But I really don't. Um, so flux dust is made by taking obsidian and placing it two blocks above bedrock. And then put a piece of redstone dust or multiple pieces of redstone dust. But you can do like a stack at a time or multiple stacks at a time, I think. And then left click the obsidian. And the redstone dust will get crushed and turned into flux dust. You can do the same with obsidian and a flux block. I don't know if there's exactly a difference. So what we're going to do is, um, obviously, we can't make flux blocks until we get flux. So step one, we're going to go down to bedrock and do this. Step two, we're going to try it with a flux block and see if there's much of a difference. So now that we know how to make flux, let's get ready to make a flux block, which is just flux plus flux cores, and flux cores are this. Do we know how to make eyes of ender just yet? We do not, so we should probably add that to the to-do. Uh, we have some semblance of blaze rods. We don't know how to make blaze powder. We should probably, so macerating is five. I like that. Yes, yes I do. Where's that macerator? That's where you're going, boom, right into there. Works for me. Um, so those are those three things. And I'd like to today automate flux dust. And I have a couple ideas on how to do this. And I hope it'll work. We'll find out if it'll work. I think it'll work. We'll see, we'll see. Um, I also wouldn't mind getting this guy connected to um, maybe maybe what I should do is throw an external storage on this guy and then we'll have access to the obsidian that's in there all the time. Does that sound fair? Sounds fair to me. So if we take a look at our obsidian, you have 63 at the moment. I do that and now we have 127. 
Cool. And we can extract no problem, right? Now, if I take out half a stack, will it extract from here? No, it doesn't. Cool. If I take out a full stack, it'll... Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I'll tell you what else we need to do. Sort out our lava situation. Because it is not good. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to do that. I'm thinking I might do it with create. Because I'm pretty sure create can give you infinite lava. And that would probably make my life a little bit easier. So we'll probably do that too. But I want to I wanna stick with flux for first. So let's get some redstone. Oh good, we have like a thousand of it. That's awesome. And then we're going to get our obsidian. And then we're going to look at automating this process. Because I'd like to be able to make it like fully automatable right but we'll start with uh just you know a, a little bit of obsidian and we have to do we have to do the first part manually okay cool so i'm gonna pop down to this bedrock and it's a very simple process place obsidian drop redstone dust left click the obsidian now i've seen in previous versions of minecraft and I don't know if this is still the case, but sometimes this obsidian turns into cobblestone. I don't know if it is meant to. I don't know. I don't know a lot of the details around that. But long story short, it might happen. So we're going to want to be prepared for that. Um, so yeah, let's get ready to automate this piece, shall we? So I'm going to start by making my first flux block, right? Which I should be able to automate now once I put my flux in here, right? Boom, boom. Beautiful. Flux block. Nice. Uh, and then let's pop down here, and I'm going to probably do this with modular routers again. Uh, but a combination of things are going to be needed here. So first off, we're going to need an activation module, which needs a couple dispensers, which will likely need a couple droppers. Perfect. Activator module. Um, and then... We might need a placer and a breaker, and I might do this with refined storages version of those. So if we got a constructor and a destructor, that could be fun. So constructor, missing a sky slime ball, killing me smalls. Uh, destructor is what I was making next, right? There we go. Destructor. Nice. Constructor, destructor. Cool. So these guys can break and replace blocks in the world, um, which is fun. It's super cool. So for example, a constructor, uh, which is facing the wrong way currently. Uh, we can define this and say, hey, place obsidian in the world for me just by doing that. Boom. Easy peasy. And a destructor will break it. And both of them go through the refined storage network. So it, you know, if you have obsidian, it'll place it. And when you break it, it'll go into your into your network. Pretty cool, right? Uh, so we'll use those two things to automate this little contraption that we're about to build. Um, is, is this where I had my ordery dude? Yeah. This might be a nice little miscellaneous automation corner because that's absolutely what this is. And I don't think we need a lot of space for this. Um, so here's what we're going to set up, right? Um, and I think... Yeah, we can get a cable over here. Okay, so what if we made this our flux block, okay, and then we had a constructor here. You know what I probably want? A destructor there. Cool. All right, so your job is to place obsidian. And then if I left click the obsidian, if there's redstone above it, right, we're going to test this. Watch what happens. You ready? Ha 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 ha. How cool is that? I like that. I like that. Okay. Uh, now we're going to want modular routers. And we probably want some of this. 
We're going to need more stone bricks. Oh my goodness, we're out of stone. Get me a bunch of stone, please. That'll at least get me started until the rest is done. Um, so we're going to want the modular router. And your job is to have an activator module, but I only want you to run on a redstone signal. And you will get the activator module, and your action will be... You don't have left click? <gasps> How rude. Attack nearby entity. You would have left click. Needs energy to run? Add one or more energy upgrades. Okay, now you've got power. Well, it looks like we're taking a look at flux networks right this moment. Uh, because <laughs> we need to get power over here and I don't think we have it easily accessible. So what we're gonna wanna add is flux points and flux plugs, which I think I just said in the opposite order. So we're gonna want one plug, which will receive energy. And we usually want a couple points. Perfect. Okay. Uh, for the time being, let's make the front of this guy be an output and then we're going to put down our plug okay now when you first configure the plug you have to give it a network name and you have to create a new network in order to do that so i'm just going to call it direwolf 20s network i will make it public we will stick with the default blue color and hit create that's all there is to it now there's one network defined in this world right if i go to home here i can choose which network to associate this plug with so you can have multiple networks transferring energy in multiple locations so I'm just going to hit Direwolf 20s network, and now when I hit home, we'll see it's on Direwolf 20s network. Currently, it has a transfer limit of 800,000 RF a tick, but you can bypass the limit by toggling this little switch here, and that should be cool. Okay. Um, we can also enable wireless charging, but we won't be able to do that uh, until we add a controller to it, which we'll look at in a minute. You can also see your statistics for how much transfer is going around, uh, network owners, network settings, and then you can create more networks as you wish. So it's pretty spiffy. It's really a nice, well done mod. Ooh, iron. Don't mind if I do. Could always use more iron. Yay. All right, so now if I pop down this flux point and we connect it to Dial20's network, we'll notice that we should be getting power. Provides energy to adjacent blocks. This should be working. Bottom is input, left is input, right shouldn't matter. Err. Da -da. Why are you no work? Do I need a controller now, do you think? Possible. And we're missing some more of this stuff. See? That time it turned into cobblestone. Did you see that? That time it turned into cobblestone. So that's good to know. And that means that what we set up is going to be useful. So let's get ourselves a flux controller and we'll see how this wants to behave itself. So I'm going to stick you in the corner somewhere. That's usually where I hide my flux controller. Okay. Uh, network statistics. Network members. I should be able to enable this. And let's see. Armor slots, curio slots, hot bar slots, offhand and manhand apply. Okay, well, that's cool. I think you're charging up my stuff. Hey, look, it's charging up my... No, it's not. 
And now it is. It changed. It charged up my angel ring. Well, that's nice. And it's charging you up. It is beautiful. Well, that's exciting. Um, it, mm, so you are receiving energy, so that's cool. What's up with you then, chief? So let's try this. Let's do pipes. And in theory, that. Huh. Let's do it with just pipes. I feel like I'm doing this right, and I'm confused as to why it doesn't seem to be working. Huh. I'm going to have to read the book because this does not work as easily as I thought it would. Increases the router's energy buffer and transfer it by that. This router, this router, but I agree. Is there like something else I need? Energy distributor module? Wirelessly distributes FE from the router's energy buffer or any energy command to the nearby energy containing blocks. That's cool. Pushes FE energy from the router's energy buffer or any energy containing item in the buffer. Yeah, buddy. Let me read the book because I have no idea why it's not working. Yeah, maybe I need you to, if I put it on always. Oh, hello. Well, there you go. <laughs> because it was in redstone mode. Oh, did you attack me? How rude. Uh, because it was in redstone mode, I guess what happened is it wasn't accepting energy, which is fine. Uh, not what I would have expected, but that's fine. Ow, ow, ow. But yeah, hey, look, he's got power now, so that's cool. Unfortunately, his attacking is not great. Uh, so right click. Yeah, he needs to left click. Ow. That's frustrating. He needs to left click it. Hmm. Well, I was going to get into integrated dynamics at some point. Now's as good a time as any. Because uh, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, this may be the only mod in the pack that will allow me to left-click a block in the world using the player simulator, which is like the last thing that you get access to in Integrated Dynamics. Luckily, Integrated Dynamics is not that hard to get into resource-wise. Technically, it's a very complex mod. That said, it's also an extremely powerful mod. You can read almost any piece of information about blocks or details or anything. Um, it is super cool, super powerful, but also a little bit complicated. Um, better for those people who are more programmy mindy. Um, so I'm going to jump into Integrated Dynamics a little bit today, show you guys the basics. But first, we need to get some stuff. So there's a whole book on Integrated Dynamics, and if you want to learn how to use it, it's very, very detailed. Very detailed. Very, 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 very detailed. Okay? So trust me when I say super detailed. There's also web versions on the internet that you can go to. Um, you know, you can kind of go through the book and check it out if you so wish. Uh, I have a pretty good idea of how most things work anymore. So I'm going to get started with, um, we need to find some mineral trees. Uh, now, can we make mineral saplings in this pack? No. So we're going to have to go explore the world and see if we can find ourselves some mineral trees. There's one, found one. Mineral tree, get. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so mineral trees are the precursor to doing anything in integrated dynamics. Luckily, they're not usually too hard to find. Uh, as demonstrated by the fact that I just found one in about eight seconds. It was right outside my door. You might find others in the world as well. Uh, and like most trees, when you break them, you will get saplings and wood. Unlike most trees, you get a few other things, um, like berries and crystallized mineral chunks. Okay, uh, so let's see. Do I still have grow on here? I may not. Uh, I don't really need leap no more, right? Yeah, let's clear this and turn it into grow. And you will be, let's just do touch grow. I really like with 
with Ars Nouveau that you can you can literally just create your spells on the fly. It's it's kind of the best. Now with 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 Fell. Spells, let's add some AoE to Fell here. Speaking of being able to easily add stuff. And this has AoE and Pierce, so we don't need that. Oh, that's much better. Oh, that's even so much better? I love it. That's great. AoE is 100% the way to go. That is cool. That's how we do it. All right, so one of the first things we're going to want to do is get ourselves uh, some mineral, crystallized mineral, right? So this can be used to make crystallized mineral chunks and mineral blocks. And these are used primarily as the, the, the building blocks of this mod. So pretty much everything you're going to make in this mod is in one way, shape, or form going to need mineral. Um, you know, for the gist of it, right? There's also uh, some crystallized chorus, which comes from chorus fruit um, that will, you know, I think we got some chorus fruit, right? So we should be cool on that front. Yoinks, put all this stuff away for a minute. Uh, what else don't I need right now? I don't need this obsidian. My inventory just always becomes such a mess because I'm having so much fun. I can't help it. It's a fun, fun bunch of stuff we get to do. Okay, so that's all pretty cool. Good enough for now. You know, that too. So to get mineral is not bad. All we need to do is get ourselves a drying basin and a squeezer. The squeezer will squeeze the wood blocks that we just collected and the drying and, and make liquid. And then the drying basin will turn that liquid into blocks. It's literally that simple. Now the first version of these are a little bit manual, but the second version of them that we can eventually get up to is the mechanical squeezer and the mechanical drying basin. However, they need mineral in order to get them. So we're gonna do the manual steps for a minute and then go on from there. Uh, it should be noted also that uh, there's a couple other ways to get some of these things. Um, let's see, uh, we're gonna need some black dye, huh? I don't know if Wither Roses is the way I wanna go. We don't have any ink squid stuff. Let's see, Batania, where are you at? Oh, not bad. Could be worse. Actually, let's keep our Batania pouch in our. Do what now? Yeah, okay. That was weird. For a second, I couldn't extract anything from my. Provide storage network, and then suddenly it was okay. Uh, so drying basin, good to go. Okay. So easy peasy. Um, when you place this down, you'll notice these little notches. You kind of want them to be on the sides of the block, um, and I'll show you why. At least I think you do. I always assumed you do. I always assumed this mattered. Uh, so step one, put this in the squeezer. Step two, jump on said squeezer. And eventually it will squeeze out all the mineral resin into a liquid form and you can see it in there. Then step three is place the drying basin next to it and it'll get filled up with mineral resin. And then that resin will chill out and turn into a block. It's just that easy. Now uh, to reset this squeezer, we just give it a redstone signal. So I usually go with button um, and then you're good to go. Cool. Okay, and then button and then thing. And what'll happen is it'll, you know, turn into the thing and then fill up with another bunch of liquid. See, we're out of lava down there. And that's causing my crystal to have to turn on. We're gonna have to solve our lava problem next episode too. So much to do, so little time. Boom. How cool is that? So now one of the first things I'll usually do, because you know Dyer, he's not a fan of manual, uh, is we're going to convert these whoops, into 
Ha! <laughs> one broke very easily, the other breaks way harder. The squeezer doesn't have a tool assigned, you can see in the tooltip up there. Okay, so now we can make a mechanical squeezer. So we're going to need one, two, and I'm going to put these in here. So mechanical squeezer. I should be able to do this. There we go, mechanical squeezer. And can I do a mechanical drying basin? Eh. We'll just get some more. I think I still have an energy guy from this because he didn't come up because he has energy in him. So we're going to need, let's see. Um, eh, now nah, we don't have enough crystallized mineral chunks. So we're definitely going to have to do this the, the slow way. So let's put, uh, this guy's going to need power, which he now has. And then we can just pop this dude in here. And you can see lots of liquid mineral resin going on. Cool. Uh, now we do need to transfer this across. So let's use uh, some laser IO, shall we? at least for the time being. And how am I for... Ah, uh, eh, we got enough fluid cards. We should be cool. Let's go, crafters. You're probably making a bunch of stuff, huh? Okay. So let's get a laser wrench. This is temporary. Okay. Just temporary. And then insert. And that should be cool. All right, so now we've got far more crystallized mineral. And if we wanted to, we could probably tick accelerate this guy a little bit. Hey, where's my time in a bottle? Hey, where's my time in a bottle? There you are. Nice. And we've got actually quite a bit more of this stuff to get out. So, well, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. My goodness. I may have put too much in there. Hey, where'd my... Oh, there it is. Just a little bit of a desync. You know, it would be smart to right-click... Oh, no, right-clicking with an empty hand puts them there. Rip! All right, let me get this cleared out. All right, I think we're all cleaned up. So now we have lots of uh, of this stuff, which is nice, uh, which means we can easily make another one of these dudes. Uh, and then we can use that to turn this guy into an automated version as well. Nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is break the mechanical squeezer here, and we'll probably automate these a little bit better now would be the plan so let's see let's reset you so that you guys can both go into here no problem sweet okay and then where's my teleporty stick um you know what would be a cool place to put these is like rightish here that could work yeah so what we would want is the drying basin here the squeezer here and let's have like a chest here does that sound cool for the time being and then we'll still work our way back here to get to this thing i like that okay so we're gonna want nodes on top of one two three four and then we're gonna want laser connections boom 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 all right gonna do this Gonna do this, and gonna do that. And that should be feeding energy into these guys now, and that should be cool. All right, so now that we've got power going into these bad boys, you know what, maybe I'll do it this way. I'm gonna do it with all laser IO. That sounds better to me. Because I kind of wanted to test this anyway. All right, so we're gonna wanna do items, fluids, and energy on these guys, right? So what I wanna do is insert wood into this chest, have it be squeezed, extract the fluids and the items out of the mechanical squeezer, send the items into here, send the fluid into here, which will then extract items, and send the items into here. Yeah? Uh -huh. All right. So you're going to extract, uh, let's make it on channel three, you're going to extract eight items at a time. Okay. Uh, on the down face. Perfect. 
And then you on the down are going to insert on blue. Okay. You're going to extract on the down on channel, let's call it orange. Why not? Who cares? Uh, extract your items on channel orange. And then um, the other thing on the down that I want you to do is to extract fluids on channel white. Okay, so you're going to take wood out of the chest and put it in here. Take your items out of here, and they're going to, on the down, insert on orange. Okay, uh, and then the fluid on the down will insert. Okay, so extract the fluid, put it in here, and then on the down, you're also going to extract items on orange. Okay, so... Channel blue is for wood coming out of the chest and into the squeezer. Channel orange is for coming out of the squeezer and into the drying basin or into the interface. And channel orange is also for coming out of the drying basin and into the interface. And then finally, channel white on the fluids is for that. Um, now what I'm gonna do up here is I'm gonna try to get you on the up. You can have an energy extract card. That sounds pretty cool. I guess we'll find out if that works. And then on the down, you're going to have an energy insert card. Um, and give me like, you know, another 10 of these. Because it never hurts to have a few extra cards, right? Get you ready to absorb. And boom, 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 boom. So cool. And then down that cool. Okay. So that all should be good. I think. Maybe. Potentially. Let's try it. Uh, so if we get some mineral logs and we put them in here, they should immediately be extracted and start being squeezed. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're extracting the mineral logs. Okay. So today we learned that you can extract from the input part of the mechanical squeezer. So we want to go into the down slot here. We're going to want to filter. I just give me all of them. So on the down slot, the extract item card we're going to want to add a filter for mineral logs and we're going to deny list it. So you're not allowed to extract mineral logs out of this guy. Let's try that again. That's better. And then the fluid's being moved. And then these guys are cool. Okay. Now there might be sidedness to this. And if there is, we might need to sneaky mode it. So let me take these mineral logs out here. So you're building up your mineral and you're not getting anything, right? So these might need to be sneakied. So let's change this to the sidedness. So you're at 64 and four, right? If I go over here and change the extract card to extract from the side, like the north side, maybe he'll start, maybe it's the bottom. Now we're cooking. So he's extracting from the bottom and putting it into here. So see how we're building up crystallized mineral? And I'm gonna assume that you're the same. So if we modify you to be the down, you're gonna start extracting mineral chunks. Nice. How cool is that? I'm down with that. So now we should be 100% automated here, right? You're gonna just transfer all your stuff. Look at that. Huh? And, and the energy's working. I'm loving it. It's so cool. It's so good. It works. Yay, laser IO. All right, so let's do this. Let's wrap up the episode here. Now that we've got a bunch of components for Menroll, what I'm gonna do between episodes is I'm gonna teach my refined storage system how to automate, uh, eh, no, no, don't do that. I'm gonna teach my refined storage system how to make all the things we're gonna need from integrated dynamics, which means I'm probably gonna need a few more patterns. Uh, but when we come back next episode, we should be ready to use integrated dynamics and a few other things to automate the creation of Flux, mostly for fun and profit. Uh, and then once we have Flux networks up and running, we will probably start working towards an RF tools builder, but using the builder is gonna require monumental amounts of energy. So we'll start with an RF tools builder. We also have to get better lava production. We just have a lot to do. 
We sure do have a lot to do. So we'll get better lava production. Uh, we'll get, you know, uh, stuff and things. Yeah. Wrapping up point, though. Devil 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.